differently. So this is a process that's observed a lot, and it's a standard process that, uh, that uses the relativistic mechanics that we've generated here. Okay, there's much more to say about relativistic mechanics. We've barely started. There's a whole family of four vectors. There's a four velocity, as well as a four momentum. There's a four force. Um, there's lots of things you can think about in, in uh, relativistic, lots of vectors you can think about in relativistic mechanics. All of those vectors have the property that they have an invariant, which is the time component squared minus the space component squared. Um, that invariant is invariant to the Lorentz transformation. When you change frames, you change the components, but you leave that invariant uh, fixed. And that invariant for the four momentum gives you the mass, and that's this very powerful thing. Now, I, w I should, guess I should say do one last calculation, and then we'll call it a day. So here's my final calculation, which is a very relevant uh, calculation to other things we've done. Um, imagine you have imagine you have a photon traveling along in the x direction with energy e. Okay, so this photon, and let's say we're in frame a. We have a photon traveling along at with energy e in frame a. This photon has four momentum, which is as we've just said a million times, e over c. E over C, 0, 0. Now let's look at this photon in frame B. Okay. Now, in frame B, let's imagine frame B is the point of view of someone who's in a rocket ship flying this way at speed V. If this person in this rocket ship is flying this way at speed V, then what we have to do is we have to Lorentz transform everything in this frame to get it to this frame. So now this photon will have a different energy, and it will have a different form momentum, and this form momentum is going to be related to this form momentum. These form momentum components, it's actually the same form momentum, the form momentum is a frame independent object, but it's going to have different components. The components of this form momentum will be related to the components of this form momentum by the Lorentz transformation. So let's do the Lorentz transformation. Well, the time component is gamma times pt, which is that, plus beta gamma times px, which is that. And then the x component is going to be gamma px, which again is that plus beta gamma pt, which is that. Comma zero, comma zero, because we're still dealing with just the x versus t case. So now, let's work out what the, well, let's just think about the energy. So what's the, we're going to think about the new energy. So this photon had energy E in frame A. It has energy E prime in frame B. It's going to be a different energy in general. It'll be the four momentum transforms, which means the energy changes. The energy, which is one component of this four vector, changes. So this energy of the photon in this frame is gamma pt plus beta gamma px all times the speed of light, because this component is E over C. But this PT here, this PT here, is the original E over C, and this PX is also the original E over C, and there's a C there, so it's just going to be gamma 1 plus beta E. So the, the energy in the new frame is the same as the energy of the old frame except for this dimensionless factor because there are gammas here and there's a beta here and these are both the same. So we pulled out the E's, subtracted, divided out the C's. And the new energy is related to the old energy by gamma 1 plus beta. This is the Doppler shift for photons. Photons in different frames have different energies. In particular, if this is a low energy photon and you're flying into it in your spacecraft, 
you find a higher energy photon. Remember, we, as we discussed at the beginning of this lecture and as we've discussed all through this two-week period, the speed of light is the same for all observers. So when this spacecraft flies through, this spacecraft does not see this photon moving at a different speed. It's still, the people in the spacecraft still see this photon moving at the speed of light. But they see this photon has a higher energy. It has a higher energy because they're flying into it, and that means that the photon hits them with more energy. It doesn't hit them faster, it hits them with more energy. So the energy of the photon is a function of uh, your frame, as you expect, for all sorts of reasons, which I'm happy to discuss offline. After all, a bullet hurts more if you run into it than you run away from it, because you come into it, or you run away from it. Either way, the bullet has different energies and different momentum and different frames. Similarly here, the photon has different energies and different frames. Um, but this can be simplified a little bit further. Remember, gamma is, the, is 1 over... 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared, which if you really want to go to town, you can write as 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta, 1 plus beta. And so if you multiply gamma times 1 plus beta, you can see you put a 1 plus beta up here, that's going to interact with that. And you get that gamma times 1 plus beta is the square root of 1 plus beta over 1 minus beta. And this is the relativistic expression for the Doppler shift. That the energy in the new frame is related to the energy in the old frame by the square root of 1 plus v over c over 1 minus v over c. This is the Doppler, uh, the relativistic Doppler formula. So we can derive the relativistic Doppler formula in other ways. In fact, if you keep going in the notes and read chapter 7, which I haven't assigned, in Chapter 7, the Doppler shift is discussed with a purely classical description of the Doppler effect that doesn't use uh, four-vector quantities. But the four-vector quantities get you the relativistic Doppler effect for free. Um, and, of course, the fact that the... What you'll see if you continue with Chapter 7, which is at your leisure, but if you do continue with Chapter 7, what you'll see is that the... is that the... the... Uh, the calculation of the Doppler shift you do by considering wave fronts in a photon is the same as the calculation of the Doppler effect you get considering the energies. And that tells you that the wavelength of the photon and the energy of the photon are intimately related. And that relationship was solidified by quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is fundamentally about a relationship between wavelength and energy, or frequency and energy, I should say. It's wavelength and momentum, frequency and energy. So frequency, energy, wavelength, and momentum are all interrelated by quantum mechanics. But interestingly, they're related by a way... In, uh, they're related by quantum mechanics in a way that's perfectly consistent with what we calculate from uh, relativistic mechanics. Now, there's so much more to say about that. I could just go on for hours. I'm not going to. This is it. So have a good weekend. I will see you on Tuesday. And uh, as usual... Uh, We'll be back to the classroom uh, on Tuesday. Okay, bye.